Hello, everybody. This is Miss Moore. I hope that you guys are doing well. Um, this is going to be a video for my language live group. Today, I am going to be reading the first few pages of The White Wolf of the Hearts Mountains. I will be doing this for my language live group, and I will be pacing the reading as on your homework track tracker. So I will be reading in sections according to that. Um, your first sections were to read pages 41 to 44. So I will be reading that for you guys today. The reason why I want to post these readings is just in case if some of you do like it better when you're being read to. So I am going to be doing that. So the White Wolf of the Hearts Mountains adapted from a part of the Phantom Ship by Captain Frederick Marriott. My oldest memories are of a simple yet comfortable cottage in the Hearts Mountains. I lived with, but during the severe winter, it was desolate. In the winter, we remained indoors for the vicious wolves incessantly prowled about in the cold. In the winter, my father hunted. Every day he left us and often locked the door to keep us inside. During the short, cold days of winter, we would sit silent, longing for the happy hours when the snow would melt and we should again be free. One evening, the howl of a wolf close under the, under the window of the cottage fell on our ears. My father jumped up. We waited for some time, but the sound of the gun did not reach us. After several hours, my father entered with a young female and an old hunter. We are now on page 42. The female's features were very beautiful. Her hair was flaxen and bright as a mirror. Her mouth, although somewhat large when it was open, showed the most brilliant teeth I, had, I have ever seen. But there was something about her eyes which made us children afraid. They were so restless, so sly, I could not at that time tell why, but I felt as if there was cruelty in her eyes. And when she beckoned us to come to her, we approached her with fear and trembling. Still, she was beautiful, very beautiful. She spoke kindly to my brother and myself, patted our heads and caressed us. But Marcella would not come near her. On the contrary, she slipped away and hid herself. My father offered the young lady, whose name was Christina, his bed, and he would remain at the fire, sitting up with her father. This arrangement was agreed to, and I and my brother crept into the other bed with Marcella, for we always slept together. But we could not sleep. There was something so unusual, not only in seeing strange people, but in having those people sleep at the cottage, that we were bewildered. As for poor little Marcella, she was quiet, but trembled and sobbed the whole night. My father and the hunter remained drinking and talking before the fire. Our curious ears were ready to catch the slightest whisper. They filled their mugs to the brim and drank to one another in the German fashion. The conversation was then carried on in a low tone, all that we could collect from it was that our new guest and his daughter were to reside in our cottage, at least for the present. After an hour, they both fell back in their chairs and slept. When we awoke the next morning, we found that the hunter's daughter had risen before us. She came up to little Marcella and caressed her. The child burst into tears and sobbed as if her heart would break. We are now on page 43. The hunter and his daughter stayed in the cottage. My father and he went out hunting daily, leaving Christina with us. She performed all the household duties, was very kind to us children, and gradually we grew to like her, even Marcella. But a great change took place in my father. He was most attentive to Christina. Often after her father and we were in bed, he would sit up with her, conversing in a low tone by the fire. After three weeks of this, 
My father asked for Christina's hand in marriage. Soon after, the wedding took place. My father repeated his vows after the hunter. I swear by all the spirits of Hart's Mountains, by all their power for good and for evil, that I take Christina for my wedded wife, that I will protect her, cherish her, and love her. So the spirits fall upon me and upon my children. May they perish by the vulture, by the wolf, or by other beasts of the forest. May their flesh be torn from their limbs, and their bones fade in the wilderness. All this I swear. My father hesitated as he repeated the last words, like Marcella could not restrain herself or burst into tears. The next morning, the hunter mounted his horse and rode away. Things went on much as before the marriage, except that our new stepmother did not show any kindness towards us. Indeed, during my father's absence, she would often beat us, particularly little Marcella, and her eyes would flash fire as she looked eagerly upon the fair and lovely child. We are now on page 44. This is going to be the last page for today. One night, my sister... What's the matter? She has gone out, whispered Marcella. Gone out? Yes, gone out the door in her nightdress, replied the child. I saw her. What could bring her to leave the cottage in such bitter wintry weather was uncomprehensible. We lay awake, and in about an hour we heard the growl of a wolf close under the window. There is a wolf, said Caesar. She will be torn to pieces. A few minutes afterwards, our stepmother appeared. She was in her nightdress, as Marcella had stated. She let down the latch of the door so as to make no noise went to a pail of water and washed her face and hands and then slipped into the bed where my father lay. We all three trembled. We hardly knew why, but we resolved to watch the next night. We did so, and many other nights as well, and always at about the same hour would our stepmother rise from her bed and leave the cottage. And after she was gone, we invariably heard the growl of a wolf under our window and always saw her on her return, wash herself before she retired to bed. We observed also that she seldom sat down to meals, and that when she did, she appeared to eat with dislike, but when the meat was being prepared, she would often put a raw piece into her mouth. So I'm going to stop here for today. What I'm going to ask you guys to do, if you haven't already been doing so, as you have been listening to me read, I would like for you guys to go back and circle or underline any important information, write down any questions that you might have so far. If you would like to read on, please feel free to do so. I will be back here tomorrow to read the next few pages. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Stay healthy, stay safe. I miss all of you very much. I will be thinking of all of you. And I hope that you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.